guys, this is Katie, and I am the artist behind Pink Polish Design. And I've been participating in Inktober this year, and I've gotten a lot of questions because I've been doing a high contrast style on how I've been getting such a deep dark black on my illustrations and how I get it so even. So I thought I'd go through a few tips. Um, it can be really difficult to get an even wash on your ink. So first off, um, it's always really important to look at your materials. Uh, you're not gonna get a good ink wash when you're working on a lighter weight paper, um, or you will get, I found really streaky results on like marker paper, which I generally like using for uh, ink drawings, but if I'm doing a deep dark background, I do find that that gets, or, or big fill in certain areas, that can get really streaky. Um, so for Inktober this year, I'm using the Koinor Smooth Bristol Sketchbook. That show it to you here. Um, this is our hardback version. The pages are kind of an odd size. It's um, 7 by 10 instead of 8 by 10. The book itself is 8 by 10. Nice thing about this, this sketchbook is you can pull the pages out. Um, it's a Koinor feature on a lot of their sketchbooks. So fun stuff. Um, I highly recommend this for ink drawing. Uh, it does if you put too heavy of a wash on, it can seep through some, but I haven't had much trouble with that once I got the hang of it. So the pages are nice and thick, and you're not gonna have a huge amount of problems with uh, curling of the paper unless you're doing a huge background like I've been doing. So uh, the other thing you wanna look at is the type of ink you're using. Depending on what sort of ink, you might get a shinier finish or a more matte finish. Um, I've used a lot of Black Star ink that will give you um, can give you, especially if you oversaturate your paper, some shiny spots. Um, for Inktober this year, I've been using exclusively Higgins ink. Uh, I started with Higgins Black Magic. Now, that ink is not quite as potent the first coat you put on, uh, and part of that de is determined by the paper again. But uh, then that second wash you put on goes really deep and dark black. Um, I then went from that ink to their standard black ink, that one also worked well. I actually think that is my favorite between that and the Black Magic, although the Black Magic is waterproof and their standard ink is not. And currently I am working through a bottle of Higgins Eternal Ink. And that one's interesting and always good things to keep in mind. It does have a little bit of a blue hue to it versus the standard kind of brownish yellow hue that most black inks have. So I just have to keep that in mind as I'm doing my line work because I use Sakura Microns for my initial ink line work and I want something that complements that okay and so far I haven't had much of a problem with the color differentiation but if you were doing a lighter wash that might be an issue for you. So the other thing you want to look at is how you're applying the ink. There's a couple of different ways you can apply it. Um, I have been using a medium sized round brush and I will look up the size later and post it in my Instagram stories and on my Facebook. Um, I want to say it's a 10 off the top of my head, but uh, it's a, a medium round brush with a really good tip on it so I can get in and do detail work. And I will put a little time lapse of some of my inking of last night's Inktober illustration for Chef um, in this video here so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about uh, with some of these techniques I'm using. So once you have uh, your line work down, you can go in and get really close with your round brush, but still hold a fair amount of ink. That's the important thing to me. I find if you use too small of a brush, you're gonna end up with some problems with not getting enough ink to go very far on those big areas. It also goes on smoother the bigger the brush you have, because you can turn that brush more on its side at an angle and get a really good about one inch swath there of ink. Um, it is really important not to oversaturate your paper with ink. I can't say that too much. It seems like a really good idea to just really, really lay that ink on heavy, uh, but you want pretty much a moderate amount. I put enough on my brush that when I first initially put my brush down, I get a slight pooling of ink, and then I move that very quickly and start spreading that around, and that gives me just about the right amount. You'll see that in the time lapse too. So other ways you can apply that ink, um, Higgins has, that's actually how I got introduced to the brand, was I started using their pump markers, which are full of their Black Magic or standard ink, and those work really great. Um, that's my go-to for like daily 
sketches over the course of the year. I draw every day and um, that's a great way to fill quickly, but they are a little streakier than doing it with a round brush and it will take multiple coats. Um, buffer lines. This is huge for me. I am a messy inker and I know there are some really, really great people out there that are really good at inking with a brush for all of their inking. I am not that person. I prefer using a pen and something with a lot of control. So if you're like me, it's really important with those thinner lines or small areas that you add in a bit of a buffer. So when you put down your initial line work, go back around it and add about a sixteenth or an eighth of an eighth of an inch buffer line around the outside of it. And you are going to go as close as you possibly can to that line work when you when you're using your brush but that way you're not accidentally inking into the interior of your artwork where you have fine details or you might have some open white space uh, multiple ink washes uh, I know this sucks guys I am the queen of getting done with the first wash and going, wow, can this be good enough? But if you really want your artwork nice, deep black, it's going to take two to three washes on those big areas. It's just the way it is. It takes one inking, generally for me, to get the ink to really adhere to the paper. And then that second and third wash actually sticks to the ink that's already there. So you're not, it's not soaking into the paper. It uses less ink in my experience for the second and the third wash but it does give you that nice even deep dark inking you also want to let it dry completely in between because if you go back over with fresh ink on a wet ink area it will lift up that first coat that you already placed it's kind of like watercolor so make sure it is good and dry before you start that second coat and that will help you a lot that was one of the things, one of the big mistakes that I've made over and over again in inking is getting too rushed and going back in and inking when it's still wet. You can help yourself by using a hairdryer or a heat gun and drying it in between. Uh, the illustration I did last night had enough detail work with the lines I was working around that I actually was able to go all the way around the paper and by the time I got to the other side it was dry but it's not always like that and sometimes I'll use a heat gun to dry to speed that process up also if you're using a heat gun you will notice your paper curls in the direction that the moisture was added simply flip it over on a clean space <laughs> once the front is dry and heat the back side too and that will help kind of equalize the moisture in it and it will flatten it out some. You'll still see a slight curve but it'll be a lot better. So there's a few inking tips for you as you finish up this Inktober. Um, let me know in the comments what worked for you, what doesn't work for you, what concerns you have about ink, what your favorite ink brand is. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much guys. You have a great day.